Hello everyone, how are we all doing? Welcome to another episode of the Truther Therapy Sessions. What am I on now? Episode 51. Um, I was going to do one last week, but <laughs> I, I completely misunderstood the situation with um, Donny over at Spellbreakers Podcast, and I, I thought he was going to be a guest on my podcast, but it turns out I was supposed to be a guest on his. So last minute, I switched up the title and I made it all about him rather than making it about the Truther Therapy Session, so I'm a... I'm a little bit behind, but uh, if you haven't noticed, I've been talking a lot lately about the Millennial Kingdom. Uh, preterism, by another, by another name, it seems to be the focus of my channel over the past uh, couple of weeks. And I, I bet this is pretty confusing for a lot of people out there who joined for the Nephilim Clown thing. Um, I just want to reassure those listeners that I have not stopped making stuff <laughs> in regards to the Nephilim looking like clowns. I'm still that guy. Um, I'm actually writing a lot right now, and the way I'm going to do these new episodes in the future for the online series is I'm going to actually write the section of the book thoroughly first with all the references, and then I'm going to read that chapter and make a video out of it instead from now on. So I'm in the process of documenting <laughs> a lot of uh, clown serial killers or killers that dress like clowns throughout throughout the uh, modern history. And uh, it's turning into a, into a multi-paged 10,000 word epic, <laughs> which is uh, taking a lot longer than I anticipated. So this one may have to be broken up into a few, uh, into separate videos, maybe a three-parter, a three-part special on serial killer clowns. How does that sound, guys? That sound exciting? So there are things in the works, uh, don't worry. And I, like I said, I'm still writing the book. But while I'm getting sick of clowns, because I've been doing this for seven years, I've just, I've just dipped my toe into this into this new, well not new, but this this particular angle on the Tartarian stuff, in which it can be all be explained as possibly being remnants of the millennial reign of when Jesus Christ was here on earth. And it it's just fascinating to me. I, I, I love thinking about this concept. And I think a lot of people don't understand that that's what I'm doing, that I'm just thinking it out, hashing it out, taking it to its logical conclusions so we can thoroughly understand this particular topic and idea. And um, I've had a lot of emails sent to me since talking about this millennial reign. And um, this one particular individual reached out to me and I uh, did a bit of background research. And uh, this guy who's uh, called Vinny B, he's actually kind of been in the game for a while. Is as like a, a voice within groups of uh, truthers online, you know. Seems like he's mainly walked in musician circles online from what I've seen, uh, rappers. And... Um, I think, he, he, from what I've seen, he's a regular appearance on a Killer Priest podcast, which is a an ex-Wu-Tang Clan rapper, and uh, he makes his own videos exploring all things conspiracy, and Vinny is a regular guest on there, just sharing his thoughts and ideas, and I think from that, he's had a lot of other people get him to come onto their show, just, just to talk, you know, and Vinny actually reached out to me, and he, and he explained how, um, well, he's kind of taken a bit of a break uh, from showing his face online um, and he's kind of just been focusing and theorizing on this millennial kingdom theory himself um, prior to that he was very much into the flat earth and the Tartarian stuff and um, many other things as well which are deep and dark and you know where, you know where this realm can take all of us if we're all, we've all been here for a while um, but he took a bit of a break to focus more on this millennial kingdom angle he's uh, definitely been thinking about it for at least a year there's a link down below to when he last kind of publicly talked about this on someone else's podcast. Um, and just then it seemed like he was hashing the idea out, still still relatively new in his mind, but he understood quite a lot about it. And um, he's come back and he's reached out to me saying he'd like to just talk about it with me. And I, you know, I'm game for that. I, that's what I like to do, just talk with people about their thoughts and ideas surrounding any topic. And that's what we're going to do today. So I've, I've got Vinny with me. Vinny, are you there? Can, can you hear me? Are we, are we all good? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, the past couple years, I guess mostly with rappers and stuff. Um, it, yeah, and uh, a, a rapper in the UK, my Diggy. Um, you know, growing up in the Bronx, I'm Vinny from the Bronx, New York. Uh, you know, rap cultures was, uh, I guess, a big part of growing up. So I like all types of music, but yeah, I guess. The, you know, I'm a regular on Killer Priest and others. Uh, I bring, I've been the guy bringing a lot of the 
big time guests and stuff. I even brought David Icke from the UK on. We did a show there. I'm probably going to be getting him on in like a month. Uh, Fritz Brigmeyer, I'm friends with, brought him on. And, you know, a lot of awesome shows and, and guests we could go, uh, I brought on there. And Flat Earth was the big one uh, when I first went on, uh, Killer, and then wanted to do the Flat Earth stuff. So I brought on, I'm friends with Dave Weiss and a lot in the Flat Earth uh, movement, you know, talked to Eric Dubay and others. So, yeah, been around for for a while. And uh, everything you said is correct. Uh, great introduction. Millennial Kingdom is, to me, I've been saying it for, yeah, the past at least a year. Um, this is the new Flat Earth. Like, the Flat Earth was the biggest thing when it happened. And for, like, 2016, it was the, finally, like, the biggest thing on the Internet um, with the conspiracies. But, uh, you know, so I spent my time doing that. But this, to me, is even bigger. This is the biggest conspiracy. And, you know, uh, shout out and applause to you and uh, Shelly. You know, I, I watched the, the videos recently that you guys did. And uh, it, it was crazy because, like, my best friend Matt is one of the only people I've been able to talk a lot about this in the past, like, couple years. And uh, it was like me and him talking. I was listening to you and I felt like uh motivated to contact you um another person in this type of field uh uh no noel hadley you know i've reached out to him recently and talked to so yeah i'm definitely really into this i, I just want to be a part of trying to share any information um just like flat earth I'll, I'll touch on real quick i am someone who is against the circle dish that basically all flat earth is against to me it's discredited i know for a fact that it can't be that because of the 24-hour sun in antarctica um dave weiss and people just keep telling me that it's not real but it is real and uh and besides that it's also the the patterns that the sun comes from so you know I, i'm my own thinker uh, and in all these different things, I like to just add something that maybe others aren't. So like Flat Earth, you know, I think Dave's doing amazing work. He's getting so much out there for Flat Earth, but I feel like the one thing he's missing is that model he's using. Um, I feel that Eric Dubay and these guys are using that. Uh, and it's also because I feel that they're not Christians and taking the Bible uh as serious as Christians and Bible believers do. And to me, the book of Enoch uh, describes this and it gives detail and it talks about the sun and moon going through portals. So I've done a lot in the past couple of years with this guy, Roman from Square Earth Cosmology. Uh, on my channel, I uploaded a video trying to give the best uh, model and explanation on how it's actually a square and the sun and moon are going through portals. So that's something I'm a little different with, uh, you know, so, but basically we agree on everything else, you know, and I feel like that with you too, listening to you and Shelly. Um, I felt like maybe one of the things that I could add is I spent a lot of time with the Fomenko series and the books. Mm. I'm also have them all on PDF, like 22 of them I'd give to you and anybody else for free to share them and read them. So we could have more people digging into this stuff. But, you know, so much comes about the, the timeline deception, right? Which another great video and work you're doing and, and Shelly. Um, and everybody just talks about the thousand years, right, Paul? Um, thousand years was added in. Yeah. And, and, and that really comes from the Fomenko works. Um, basically, everybody's getting that information from the Fomenko series. But I don't know how many people actually like, you know, read the books over and over and stuff like I have. Um, you know, it's not so easy where it's just a thousand years were added. Boom. Add that no. uh, equation to everything and, and it's going to work out fine. Um, that's not how it works, you know. So I think it's going to be really hard for like uh, Noel Hadley and some people to try to like pinpoint, you know, I, I know. uh Hadley's going about the 541 or something like that, right, to 1540 or something like that is the thousand-year reign. Um, the problem with this is I just wanted to add to people is it's not just a cut-and-dry thousand years. And 
what could be in one story 1492 that could also be the same as 1099 or, or 1066 in english history uh and that could also be the same as 70 a.d in roman history yeah i'm convinced that 70 a.d was the fulfillment like i seen you and and i i thought shelly did an amazing job talking about nero and this stuff yeah um, yeah amazing job shelly uh yeah that's why i'm just like so excited to try to, t- to talk to people like you guys that are exploring this stuff and so smart and doing great research um but yeah I, i'm convinced that that uh 70 a.d was the moment you figure jesus 33 when he dies you got 66 to 70 being like this uh this revelation the the armageddon nero being the antichrist um it it all lines up and then the thing to me is i i'm english history i don't know why i'm just so drawn to the king Arthur, uh saint brennan so many stories with english history but the famous one that everybody knows and we're told about is 1066 Mm -hmm. right with the first crusades and and clearly when you read about the crusades they're talking about they're going to get revenge on the they they call them the tormentors of christ right Mm -hmm. so that doesn't make sense that a thousand years later that happened right (laughs) it it would make sense that it was during this event when the christians started smashing back right and all the nations started turning christian and it's clearly the same time right so you know uh, a lot of people pointed out the i and the j i've seen you and a lot of people point that out with the coins and stuff so instead of saying 1066 could we just say that's the year 66 Mm -hmm. right which goes with josephus Right. And, and uh, the whole thing with 66 A.D. to 70 A.D. Um, so, um, yeah, it's going to be hard. The These, you know, these monks, the, these people that were really smart, uh, Fomenko and them, they call it Scalag- uh, Scaligarian history. Yeah. Basically, all the timelines have been created by this guy named Joseph Scalinger, a Jesuit priest. And, uh, you know. It's not just cut and dry, and and they had to like create these phantom stories, these phantom popes and stuff to try to add in that extra thousand years and kind of like get these things to flow. But they're saying it's basically all happened at the same event. They also believe that uh, Jesus was a thousand years ago. Uh, That's something that I believe also, that Jesus was just a thousand years ago, like you guys and and were... uh, guessing that right that the millennial kingdom happened and we're at the short season after the thousand years right Mm -hmm. so it makes sense that jesus was just a little over a thousand years ago um some of the other things i i feel like i haven't heard you and anybody mentioning that i wanted to bring up i thought maybe you'd find interesting in your audience and this is in the fomenko books too is is the egyptian stuff man like everybody thinks like oh even like the Killer Priest podcast and a lot of these guys, you know, obsessed with ancient Kemet and Egypt. Yeah. Um, they think it's like this whole religion of Horus and this and that. And Fomenko and them are straight out saying that that's all about Jesus. And they point out that like, even like you could see the, the Pharaohs holding the Ankh. It's called an Ankh. It's the cross. It's the cross of Christianity. Um, one of the things that I was stuck on for a while was the obelisk, right? Where we all think like Egyptian, we're told this is like, you know, the phallus, right? Of, of Osiris. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so, you know, you see an obelisk and we're just like, oh, here's these, you know, these, these demons in charge, you know, worshiping this Egyptian God stuff. But then I'm like going by cemeteries all over and you see obelisk everywhere and they got the cross on the top. And mm-hmm. Fomenko and them are saying that these obelisks had crosses on the top, and these are actually symbols of Christianity also. Um, so, yeah, I like that you and Shelly, I heard you guys, like, saying, like, hey, you know, maybe some of this stuff wasn't pagan. You know, maybe these were Christians and saints. Um, that's where I'm at, too. 
you know, my first reaction at first was like, well, Christians wouldn't make this. Why would there be a gargoyle, right? Why mm -hmm. would there be this beast looking thing? But then when you actually start looking into the Bible and some of the stuff, you start finding out that there are these creatures that aren't evil, right? That are actually like working uh, for God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, they, you know, a lot of Christians are going to be like, oh, false idols and this and that. But if the millennial kingdom happened and, and, and these saints and all these people that were beheaded, I mean, Peter nailed to the cross upside down. I mean, these people, why wouldn't you, if the whole world then turns Christian and you're starting up a thousand year reign, why wouldn't you have stuff to the saints, right? Why wouldn't mm. there be a, a special thing for St. Patrick and, and this saint and St. Brennan? And, you know, we, I think right away, look at the Catholic Church now and we're like, they're evil. They're, they're the evil running stuff. Um, but what if it wasn't? Like, what if, again, the beginning, it was righteous. It was about the saints and the millennial kingdom. Mm. And, and and these buildings that were thinking, oh, maybe that's pagan stuff. These are false idols. Maybe this was for the saints, and these aren't, you know, uh, evil uh, symbols. So, yeah, I wanted to, you know, add that part of the Egyptian stuff. I find really fascinating that Fomenko and them get into saying that that's Christian. Um, Interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I just talked a lot. I feel bad. Maybe I let me let hey, you talk. Hey, hey, you know what? I, I get accused of doing the same thing all the time, Vinny. Don't worry about it. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, fair. I just had so much I wanted to share that I felt like maybe you guys never heard. No, of course. Well, let's unpack it all then. Let's, let's go back to the beginning. So you were talking at the start about um, your perspective on Flat Earth. Now, me, me personally, I have never been 100% satisfied with the circle disc model either. I've um I wouldn't even call uh, my I wouldn't even call myself a flat earther. I'm more of a I'm a biblical cosmologist. Do you know what I mean? I'm, um I don't like to be a Exactly, that's what it was for me and it's yeah. so funny I heard you recently. There's so much alike us, man. I think you said you became a Christian about 10 years ago. Uh, Is that what I heard? March 2014. 10, 2014 in March, yeah. That was basically, that's the same thing for me, man. Like, I wasn't raised, you know, going to church and believing. I was raised by an atheist father who thinks he's an involved monkey on a spinning ball, still does. Mm. You know, uh, so I, I feel like we're, that's why we probably have a lot in common. And we're, we like talking about this and we're not stuck in, this is what I was taught and what I have to believe in because I belong to this sect. Exactly. Right. We, we're Christians. We're we're not part of you know. Uh, I don't call myself Catholic or anything. Just Christian, just like you. Yeah, I, I try to. I see, I, I like to think I'm a creative mind, and, and I'm not willing to kind of just settle for one particular faction in this varied group that we call Christianity today or Christendom. Um, I I think. As a a lot of people have a lot of a lot to offer in each one. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time. I I always felt more comfortable not going to these churches in England. I mean, I don't, it might be different in America, but in British churches are weak. They aren't very strong, or they don't really know much. <laughs> to the um, the main, yeah, the, I agree. You know, That's the yeah. same feeling I had. Yeah, they're basically like um community centers for a quick Sunday meetup and a drink of coffee. You know what I mean? They're not actually there to. <laughs> think yeah, they run home to watch the football game. Yeah, they're not really there to think about this type of thing. And this is the type of church I want. This is the type of um, back and forth I want to have with fellow Christians. You know, and and I'm not a church leader. I, I'm not an expert. You know, I, I never claim to be an expert in much. To be honest, um, I just like to think about these things. You know, and um, and when when this millennial kingdom topic came up, you know, I I, I described it as I kind of I don't know the rules of engagement on how I should talk about these topics. And uh, people have very quickly made clear to me that I broke the rules um, as soon as I started talking about it. Apparently, this is a big no-no to to say such a thing um, to a lot of Christians <laughs> out there. And I didn't realize this. I, I Honestly, I was naive. I, I honestly thought like... That they would be open-minded and want to talk about it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Or, or they would already know. <laughs> or they would already know about this concept. And they don't. Like a lot of yeah. Christians do not know 
about the little season aspect. They actually just didn't have a clue. And that was shocking to me because like I said, what am I? I'm, I'm not a church going Christian. How am I? Sp- how can I know more than these people? This is this is wrong. Like this is it felt wrong, you know, and um, it, it's and sad as well at the same time. And yeah, like, like I said, yeah, in terms of the whole flat earth thing going back, I mean, like I said, that was a big in 2016. It kind of peaked then, didn't it? And that was kind of the, yes, the, the, summa- yes. the summation of from like 2012 to 2016. That was the the era of flat earth on YouTube. And that was that was <laughs> that was huge. You know, when I was there, I was like I, said, I started the channel in 2014, but I started my research in 2011. So it's kind of I, I saw the whole thing, you know, and I took all the information in. I've got my flat Earth degree. I know all the arguments. I understand everything, you know. But I was never willing to just <laughs> I was never willing to just settle on this is the answer because I've been proven wrong about many things thousands of times when doing my research, and new yeah. new information always comes to light. So what I've always tried to say to people online about it is look just take it as a possibility but fundamentally i wasn't there at creation i don't know what the earth actually is why i'm I'm inclined to describe it as something incredibly psychedelic and complicated and not at all what we could even imagine i think it's (laughs) far beyond our comprehension to what our existence truly is from god's perspective you know and we we can describe it as basically in a snow globe or floating on a ball in space, whatever you want to do, you know, but I, I, I don't think any of the models are sufficient. What I do know, it's not what they've told us. Do you get what I mean? And that's as far as I can really go with it. And yeah. the way you described it there, like it's actually like a, a square shape with portals on either side in which the, uh, the, the moon and the sun travel through. It's kind of like Pac-Man style, isn't it? Disappear at one end, come out of the other end. And, um, yes. And, and that's kind of like the term they like to throw to make it like it's a joke. Um, it's like the Pac-Man term. It's like, you know, like flat earther. It's like one of those terms to make fun of this. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, like you said, ha- trying to have like a, a biblical model, w- you know, the book of Enoch, which again, most Christians right away started yelling at me. That's not biblical. It's not canon. Uh, and I'm like, well, actually it was until the late 1800s when the Jesuits took it out. It was even in the King James Bible up until the late 1800s. Mm-hmm. So the book of Enoch was in the Bible. I don't know why they're scared of it. But uh, if you read the book of Enoch, you know, it, it gets into the model. And for years, like you said, uh, I don't claim to know everything, you know. Uh, we could discredit things and stuff and, and know what can't be, right? Like I know I'm not on a flying water ball or a water pair. Mm-hmm. Um But so I avoided the question, you know, for years about the circular dish. And and, uh, but then after a while, I just had to be honest. You know, it's just something in us. Right. We just want to know the truth. And I I wanted it to be the book of Enoch. And and what hit me is when it started talking about the portals. So what happened is, is one day, like, you know, uh, for the people who go to work, which is I'm sure is the majority Right. You go to work or you get up like the same time every day and you get in your car, you walk out your house and you see the sun is in a certain place. Right. It's it's rising in a certain spot in the sky. Mm -hmm. Right. And what hit me is after a while, I would see like just one day it would jump dramatically in the sky, whether north or south. Mm -hmm. Right. And then sometimes I would see like the moon jump dramatically where it was in front of the, the sun while it was the day before behind the sun. Mm-hmm. Right. And I started seeing these large jumps and I was like, wait a sec. If it's a circular dish or a ball, um, there would have to be somewhere where you would see the sun and the, the moon passing the sun. You would see the sun drifting, let's say, from 30 degree, 30 longitude to, to 40 that doesn't happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, okay, so physical observation, I'm seeing the same thing that the person in China is seeing. The sun comes up in that part of the sky for them and it's going to set in the same spot. The same thing I'm going to see here. But then the next day, that big jump happens. And it doesn't happen every day. The book of Enoch goes into detail, like, you know, maybe 12 weeks in this portal and then after 12 weeks, it'll jump over to the next portal. And and this is what I started seeing with my own eyes. And, and that was one of the first things. And then I started realizing 
you know, the 24 hour sun in Antarctica that Dave and everybody tells me is fake and that these videos are fake. Um, I don't need the videos. I mean, realizing that for them to, we all believed in a ball and we were all taught a ball. It's because there's a 24 hour sun also in Antarctica. They make it like it's a pole, just like the North and they have it with the tilting, right? And the seasons. I mean, it has just like we have the Northern lights, there's Southern lights. Mm-hmm. Um, these are real. They're not make believe. Um, and if they weren't real, then you never could have made anyone in the Southern hemisphere believe they were on a ball ever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, these are some of the things that I can't, you know, that I just know to be true and I see it clearly and I, I can't let it go. Uh, you know, obviously I don't want to fight with Dave or Eric or anyone. Um, but I tell them, you know, you guys are wrong in my opinion. And, and the book of Enoch is the model. Um, it's going through portals. It's like the matrix. I, I don't know. We're like, in this little, you know, uh, squared off spot. Well, yeah, it's interesting you say the Matrix there because you know, um, <laughs> me and my wife actually discussed this quite a lot, this idea that uh, reality is kind of an illusion or a hologram of some kind or a program of some kind. And um, yeah. I, I always yeah. argue, well, yeah, if that is the case, which it very well may be, it's still God's program and his creation, regardless, and we have to live in it. <laughs> you know? So that's kind of my rebuttal to that. I don't, I don't get, I don't get nostic- yeah. about, uh, nostic-y about it. This is why I'm saying, from, <laughs> it's from my perspective, reality is extremely psychedelic and confusing, and it's not something we can pin down and quantitate, you know, ma- use math to measure perfectly and and expect it to work the math will always be off in some way because there is this arbitrary chaos to it all you know especially when you get down to a quantum level nothing makes sense anymore you know and i think i think my my (laughs) what i've kind of formulated is is and this is not so saith god this is so think of paul to quote rob ski you know what i mean this is me thinking that maybe maybe it is more holographic in nature and it, and it, I think our perceptions interact with it and change it in many ways as well. Um, I think nothing exists unless yeah. it's an observer. We know that um, through science, you know, and it has its purposes, I suppose, but they have observed that without an observer, matter turns to a waveform. It's no longer physical. It's wavy, whatever that means, you know, and that tells, <laughs> and the, the thing is about, about, earth is there's always eyes on everything at all times because we have insects we know we have tiny we have microscopic things that exist on here with us you know and everything is always in a in a form of observation making it solid You're right making Life it everywhere. real it doesn't matter where you are you know there's it's, it might you might be able to prove it in a vacuum but you you, you would be hard pressed to prove that <laughs> to prove that out there in anywhere in the world it's kind of you know that that old adage of um if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one around to uh to hear it does it does it make a noise you know and that i guess the answer to that is well, as long as there's bugs around yes <laughs> I mean, it's kind of it's kind of they'll always be an observer and it's not just it's not just humans themselves exactly that necessarily make it manifest or maybe it is maybe it is only human consciousness that makes things manifest i don't know maybe i'm wrong on that one i'm, I'm open to it you know and uh, but th- that alone <laughs> proves that reality isn't as cut and dry and solid as we think it is and and things that seem uh phys- physically impossible by a physics standard can happen that includes sources of light and heat going through portals in ways we just cannot comprehend and moving in ways we just yeah. do not understand you know and even even then i've had my own theories which you may have listened to about angels and what they are you know i believe angels are are mechanical in many ways and also akin to dragons they've been described in many ways but i also know that the angels are stars and planets too and I think yes. I think Enoch was trying. I agree. Enoch talks about this, you know, and the and the punishment reserved for the mount, the fiery mountains and the planets, the wandering stars, is is like a ten thousand year punishment for what they did, and that's leave their first estate and deceive the nations basically into thinking they were gods. Is what I uh, took mm. from that, you know, because that's what happened. People equate godlyhood to planets, especially in history, just simply because yeah. they decided and the Romans, yeah, and people. because they simply decided to wander. There was de- detrimental consequences for the moving, you know, and I think what we're being told there is that all of nature is made up of conscious beings you can call angels in one way, shape or form. OK, and stars are just a type of angel. 
that make God created them to have a role like a cog in a machine within reality, you know. And when a third of the angels rebelled and left their first estate, that was <laughs> that was not a trivial thing. That completely broke the machine we call reality. It broke it because they've all left. All these cogs just stopped being where they needed to be in rebellion against God. And now the world we live in is an even more psychedelic mess <laughs> compared to what it used to be <laughs> because these angels are no longer where they should be performing the actions they should be, you know. And you can hear, you can see this all throughout mythology. You know, you have river gods, forest gods, gods of wind, gods of clouds, gods of the sky. There's gods for every single part of nature that ever. And I think maybe that's because they are made up of what we call angels by biblical standard there's a consciousness behind them that mm -hmm. makes them function correctly and this is where i'm saying reality is way more psychedelic than we can comprehend <laughs> exactly people way are stuck more. in the physical yeah and not paying so much to the spiritual absolutely absolutely and i think the spiritual and physical is, are synonymous with, with each other and and i think there's maybe a level above the spiritual we consider in our astral realm here to mirror the earth. Maybe there's a heaven above that and let's begin into dimensions and all sorts of trippy ideas, you know, but uh, I think people do have a, ver <laughs> a very three dimensional view of, of everything. And I think a lot of people are scared to not be able to square it and know it. They're scared of not being able to know stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with not knowing. This is the difference. I yeah, think like you said, some stuff is just like how are we supposed to understand certain things. It's just on a, a different level. Absolutely. Especially yeah. like the creation itself, you know, how, how it's working, where they're going, you know. Yeah, we can get glimpses. And like yeah. I said, Enoch got a glimpse, didn't he? And he tried to write down in primitive words <laughs> what these things he saw, you know. But I think yep. the things he saw are beyond comprehension and words alone, you know. And it's you can only we can only do our best with like a facsimile type of mm -hmm. simulacrum in our minds, which <laughs> we can translate into words somehow to what we well what he would have witnessed, for example. But he did say, like I said, he gave a he gave a said you know. Things move through their allotted portals, the celestial bodies. They have a place they need to be and they travel through portals. He did say that. And he said the wandering stars or the planets are being severely punished for what they did. You know, there's a place, there's a special place in hell for them, shall we say. <laughs> Even though that's not that's not what he says exactly, you know. <laughs> I'm 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 oh, paraphrasing. I, and it just reminded me that another thing is these islands. I don't know, flat earth is probably a lot of flat earthers probably know about these certain islands. I'm trying to remember the name, Dolmite or Dolman, it's these islands that are in between like Russia and America, hmm. and they're like six miles apart, but it's like twenty hour difference in the sun. <laughs> and everybody's like, "This doesn't make sense." But again, for someone like me, I'm like, "Oh, that just proves, you know, Book Enoch." <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the sun went through so a portal. Yeah, exactly, and it didn't turn back up again there for another twenty hours um yeah <laughs> it's yeah but it's it's hard to explain that like what do you mean a portal exactly yeah, that's what people would ask i know that's <laughs> why it's it, it's even crazier probably than the circular dish yeah um well the thing is I, then... I i have seen um i was talking about this in my last video ufo phenomena and ufo phenomena kind of ties in with this concept i think we can kind of square it a little bit because i think a lot of what yeah. we see as ufos are are lights in the sky aren't they and you can only describe them as lights balls of of bodiless fire shall we say um and that's what i've witnessed i've witnessed balls of light manifest right in front of me about 50 meters away in the sky like a cluster of orange lights but they appear out of nowhere from one side and then they disappear once they all move across and hit another invisible barrier i can't see and they're all appearing and disappearing in formation through a portal into another portal and I'm just getting a glimpse of them manifesting through and in and out of a portal. And in a way, I imagine that's a lot like how the sun would work. It would just disappear once it hits the barrier. It's like an invisible uh -huh. wall to us, you know. It's not like a, yeah. a window literally opens up in the firmament for it to go through. I don't think it's quite as mechanical as that, you know. And <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of this UFO phenomena is perhaps we're getting glimpses into the mechanics of this reality and we're kind of seeing it. It probably when we shouldn't be, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's like a uh, the veil. Well, I, I thought you did a great job talking about it. Uh, you mentioned 
and, I, and I'm in the same camp as you. The only difference is I think it's going to be in Antarctica and you, you were saying the North Pole. Hmm. Um, but with the UFOs and the aliens, the whole, you were mentioning, um, same thing I'm saying, that this whole alien agenda is because they're going to go to war with the camp of the saints. Yes. So for people who believe that the millennial kingdom happened, then when this happened, this event, Jesus and the saints have this place that's set aside. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the camp of the saints was set aside. So, to, and it's like this huge place that if it was anywhere like where we're all living at now, we would definitely be able to see it. It's like massive. And the only thing that made sense to me is Antarctica because Antarctica, and then the Admiral Byrd stories, which I'm sure most flat earthers and, and conspiracy people know, um, with Admiral Byrd talking about he gets past the ice and, you know, that diary came out from his son a couple years ago. You know, is it Masonic propaganda? I don't know. But if it's not, it's kind of backing up that the Millennial Kingdom and Jesus is, you know, that stuff's out there. Mm -hmm. He talks about like this crystal city or this emerald city. Is that, you know, the, the temple that came down with the millennial kingdom? Is this where the saints and Jesus have been at? And when the thousand years were ruling, this is where they were located at. And they would go around to the nations. Um, and, and the one thing we have to talk about is Antarctica wasn't covered in ice until recently. Hmm. And, and we know this from the maps, right? And everybody's seen the maps where it shows Antarctica with land and not ice. Mm hmm and then we got these stories from the 1500s where they start talking about this like ice age coming and the ice forming out there right and and that's why you even got like this famous guy now uh, Graham Hancock right the, the, this famous guy who's on Netflix doing documentaries he did the ancient uh, Armageddon he's now going to Antarctica because he saw those maps from the 1500s mm. showing Antarctica of the landmass so that guy recently went down to Antarctica where there was a 24 hour sun just for the people who don't believe in it. Um, and, and there was, uh, and they found that the land under the ice matches the, the map. So it wasn't like, you know, where people like, Oh, this was what, like they got, it wasn't real. Like they know for a fact that those maps were accurate. So obviously when they made that, there was no ice there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I tie it into the millennial kingdom is, is this the spot that's like set apart and then you got the ice that's like kind of protecting, right? And then you get into the whole Game of Thrones conspiracy, the ice wall, right? And all these things. Um, well, well, let me just stop you there. So you, you, maybe, yeah. you, maybe you can help me. So I remember, I think Admiral, was it Admiral Byrd who said there is a, there is a continent the size of South America yet unexplored. Or something was it him? Who, was it him yeah. who said that? Yeah, yeah. And he's saying, yeah. you know, if you just go south, and he talked about like <laughs> UFOs and that the that, that they had advanced technology that they brought his plane down, like yeah. out of the sky, like brought it down, and this emerald city or this this golden city or so crystal this, city, so something what, like so that. So what you're saying is this is actually the millennium. This is it. This is the beloved city. This is the camp of saints. This is yeah. where Christ currently and is. And that could be where we can't see it because it's so far out there. Yeah. So can you, you can know? you explain to me then? So what's What's the model to get that to happen then? Because obviously the flat earthers say there's just a big giant ice ring that makes up Antarctica. Okay, so how would yeah. how would he inhabit that? It can't. That, obviously that model's probably wrong then, isn't it? So you say it's yeah. you say it's square. <laughs> how does this work yeah. then? What is what is it? What is it exactly? How we're probably not even shown. You know, these maps are probably after that was cut off, mm. or, or people who never been there. I mean, uh, or is it just that body of Antarctica that's on the ice? I mean, why would all the countries, we all, us conspiracy people, know that there has to be something going on there? Why would mm -hmm. they right away jump in there and make a treaty that no country or anybody could go there? The Nazis were going there right away. Mm -hmm. The Nazi scientists were immediately going to Antarctica and were reported finding UFOs and stuff. And, and we know at this point that the Nazis had ufo technology um is this where they got it from right and they were telling them that it's aliens but is it angels 
<laughs> you know, is angel technology. It's funny you say this as well. You've just reminded because on screen there's these old medieval paintings coming up right now that show Christ, you know, and and the saints. And it reminded me that there there is a painting out there which people have pointed to so many times that it shows what looks like a person flying in a UFO in the background. And there's even an, yes. a, there's even another painting that shows what looks like a metal shining UFO in the sky. I think Mary Magdalene's in the forefront and in the background yep. in the sky. And it's like, hang on. The, this millennial kingdom thing does actually make sense of that a bit more. Maybe they actually had this stuff then during that time, during the millennial reign, you know, they were flying around in these amazing, (laughs) amazing, strange technological forward slash mystical spiritual vessels of some kind, you know, that radiated and glowed and and were far beyond our comprehension or technological understanding. And maybe that that might explain these paintings and because it's just, I never could understand that. Like, why would a medieval painting, the supposed Dark Ages, depicting <laughs> Jesus or Mary? Well, you know, ancient aliens—they're <laughs> going to jump on it and say this is that's the stuff they love to say. See, this proves aliens came here from you know Orion or wherever. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Jesus, Jesus is just a consciousness within, and it wasn't a real person or something. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. The, but uh, this makes sense that, uh, that now I never thought about that concept. I've got to make a video about this and look into it. I think now I've said this because yeah, there's something because there's loads <laughs> like, of paintings I like that. Because the cool. yeah. <laughs> there are no, there are honestly there's loads of paintings that show UFOs in medieval settings, but they're always involved with a holy aspect, like with Jesus or Mary yeah. or something or the saints, you know. And it, it's possible well, it, they really did have that. Yeah. Doesn't it feel like we kind of got boxed into it? Because again, the world we've been born into and what they were teaching us and what we thought we knew in school and everything based on evolution and they, they've beat it into our heads that our ancestors were stupid, Mm. you know? So it's like, we never think like the Romans probably weren't stupid. I mean, if you're building aqueducts and coliseums and people I'm sure have seen them, that's not primitive stuff. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, Mm. I feel like, our, the ancients have been like, you know, everybody kind of thinks like it's crazy to think that they had advanced technology, you know, because we've been programmed to think like you've been programmed to think you're on a ball that, you know, everybody was stupid up until recently. Um, and, and that's one of the things that hijacks us, you know? Yeah. Um, no, where, absolutely. like you said, these people, why couldn't they have advanced technology? Why couldn't the Romans had advanced technology? You know, when they talk about Rome ruled the world, I take it as Rome ruled the world. I don't take it as they they ruled like a, a certain area in the Mediterranean. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, I, I look at things completely different, just like I'm sure you and the audience do. You well, know, well, this might actually also this might also this just as an alternative angle here. Um, you say Rome ruled the world and had a global empire, perhaps at some point. And we're always yeah. told that a lot of these cathedrals we see around the UK with the mainly mainly with the round arches, not the cur- curved arches, is Roman architecture. They have Roman aqueducts just all over the place. So Roman yeah. Roman roads. All the roads are built by Rome. All roads lead to Rome, you know. And it's kind of <laughs> and they're constantly digging up bathhouses everywhere. Every other month there's a new bathhouse yeah. uncovered somewhere, you know. But then you look at the architecture and you realize that what the tartarian thinkers were pointing out is there's just this identical pillared based architecture everywhere there's parthenons all over the place there's like, <laughs> yep. you know and there's and there's these weird temples with this very specific design which we call temples but they've been repurposed into courthouses or train stations or something and <laughs> you know and it's kind yeah. of but it's this it, from every continent from china to india to, you know to, to africa to europe to north and south america it's the same architecture everywhere which implies yeah. there was people of one mind at some point and exactly. no, we are saying well could this be remnants of the millennial reign but what if it is actually a remnant of what was just before the millennial reign Built by yeah, Rome. that's something yeah. I think about too. I'm still open to that. Yeah, you well, know, because I think that these people probably were advanced and they could have. I mean, I, I I think you'll like this. I'll tie into like America and Washington D.C. We're told like Washington D.C. All the names and all the stuff that go with it have to do with Rome, and even like you said, the structure, the Capitol building. 
they they say this is Greco-Roman style that they chose to do. Why would these people 1700 years supposedly after the Rome and you're this new nation, mm -hmm. why 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 would you build it on Roman or is this just Roman structures? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. all these just the Greco-Roman structures. Rome ruled the world. They meant the world. Um you know, clearly Columbus that whole story, you know, they 1492 Columbus discovers America and all oh, what he did to the natives so horrible. You know what's so funny is I've been constantly for the past couple of years asking people from South America who almost every single person I meet, Mexican, Ecuadorian or whatever, they're all Roman Catholic. Basically every single one I meet is Catholic and they believe in Jesus. And I say to them, um if Columbus was this like evil conqueror who came and like killed and raped and, and like forced you to worship this fake God, why is it for 500 years you still worship this guy and like still celebrated him for 500 years? And they're all like, yeah, you got a good, you got a good point. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just a thought I've come up with now, to be honest. Cause again, <laughs> again, I'm still hashing this out, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to figure stuff out here and I, I do have to make sense of things and there is a shared architectural style all over the earth you know and and it may explain yeah. why that why the caesars had you know the, the the emperors of rome had such god complexes if they really did conquer the entire world you know and they literally thought themselves to be gods building statues dedicated yeah. to themselves you know and acting like new gods and maybe there was this but this is what I'm, this this means that they, well these are not millennial kingdom buildings then but they may have been around during the millennial kingdom perhaps repurposed that's his, what i think for, for his, there's for a lot his of archaeology you know? where they say they're built on top of old structures hmm. you hear that a lot too where it's like these older structures underneath and then they got these nice beautiful things above them hmm. and, and that could be like what you're saying right where you had these some beautiful stone structures in the past and then when that's destroyed you have the Catholic Church or the Christians building these beautiful churches on top of them, or or, or maybe some of them renovating survived. Them. Yeah, maybe some of them survived. You know, um, why why waste something when it's you know you could use that to, for people to live in, for example. Yeah. There's no need to demolish it and start from scratch if it's still standing. But tribulation would have been terrible, earthquakes all over the place, famines, yeah. plagues. You know, and it would have destroyed a good portion of that global empire. It would have been a reset you could you could call it you know and some of these buildings yes. did, did end up buried you know some of them and and didn't uh, and obviously i think you could argue when the burying happened was it before or after the little season began you know or the millennial, millennial rain began there's still there's still yeah. timeline issues we need to hash out here but perhaps these cathedrals are roman buildings you know and perhaps jesus yeah i think it's possible because perhaps jesus in his millennial reign because he came and conquered I don't think it was all peace and happiness as soon as Jesus turned up, you know. I think from what we can see... No, I think it uh, came like they said, right? With fire and, and yeah. the sword. I think there was wars. <laughs> there were wars for this, for to gain yes. established control. And I think there was still rebellion even during his reign. Okay, I mean, there, may, there would have been people who got defeated by Jesus who lived through his reign, you know what I mean? Like empires and civilizations. Yeah. And not all of them would have been just on board just to, and i think someone described it i think i think noel was the one saying this maybe it was or someone else may have said it um but it's basically saying it's the it's still the human story of rebellion even i think the point is even <laughs> even when jesus christ god himself is on earth physically ruling man will still rebel even when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden with God right there next yes. to them, they still disobeyed him and rebelled. I think that's the point that that Millennial Kingdom proves. It's like, even when I'm here, you still reject me. Do you know what I mean? Even when I'm right in front of you yeah. and there's no shadow of a doubt. And I think the, the Millennial Kingdom did have that issue. And I think, obviously, when the Millennial Kingdom ended and little, the, Satan was given his little season, there was plenty of people around who were willing to work with Satan immediately who didn't yeah, like... Yeah, I think these powerful families that were probably came from these righteous bloodlines of Charlemagne and, you know, like these... That were probably these righteous families that were given authority to rule mm -hmm. as Christians. Yeah. And then when this season happened, when the devil was let loose, these people that we now call the Illuminati or these Illuminati families, 
um, I think are the remnants of the yeah of, of actually the righteous people a while ago. Yeah, well, I think people are saying here, you know, and I get this a lot. It's like, oh no, the kingdom was a spiritual thing; it wasn't not a physical thing on earth. And it says no, he came to rule with a rod of iron. That's a pretty hard metal. Yeah, you know, that's a it's a physical object. I think they're trying to make it. I think he made it clear. <laughs> I am coming in a physical form, but my kingdom yeah. is not of this world. But I'm going to make it of this world and show you what what can happen if I rule this world. But at the end <laughs> of the day, that's not that wasn't the end goal. The end goal is final white throne judgment and a new heaven and earth. Okay, so people are. Yes. I think people still hold a lot of weight to the millennial reign. They think it, that was the most important thing to ever happen. And everything was riding yeah. on that event and it wasn't no no that was just like a taste of what could be it was showing and again i think it was a test it was basically showing people here i am i'm in the flesh you can come to my floating crystal city you can make the pilgrimage which it says people should do during his reign you know make i the... think it said that if you didn't your nation would lose all its power yes so they it would, probably it would, had to go it would have no <laughs> it would have no rain it says you would have yeah. a drought yeah. so it wasn't and i don't think it was necessarily that jesus was traveling the earth ruling each city he left the people to make the choice what he, i'm here you can all see me nobody can miss me <laughs> all compasses are pointing towards me <laughs> come now make the pilgrimage every eye has witnessed me and seen me it's clear now i'm real okay this is basically what happened and some nations didn't go some they still remained in rebellion and i think the whole you know it says the kingdom of god is within the a lot of new ages like to use that phrase don't they and say <laughs> it's all spiritual and within and inside there is no such thing as a physical kingdom of god it's all within you and i think no that, that that doesn't mean there isn't going to be a physical i think people grossly misunderstand that phrase and from what i've i've come to understand Great. it to be is look i think it even says this as well you can't enter his kingdom if you haven't if you aren't on his side you could make the pilgrimage but if your heart's not in it you will not enter into his kingdom in a physical sense on earth when he was reigning for a thousand years like i think i think that's the point i think i think it's kind of the unrighteous cannot enter my kingdom even in a physical sense i think mm -hmm. there was those who would they could make the pilgrimage but if they didn't actually want to see him or love him or want them to him to be their god you still couldn't get through that barrier through the gate you would not be you would not have been allowed to go into the kingdom to the, the beloved city with the saints you you still couldn't have made it because you didn't have the kingdom within you either do you get what i mean i think that's what he was trying to say yeah. like you have to have it in your hearts that jesus christ is lord of lords he is your king and you want yeah. to you know you love him and you want him to be your god if you don't have that in you then you don't have the kingdom within you you will not enter into his kingdom spiritual or physical you're not allowed yeah. like i think that's what he was trying to say it was twofold you know, and it... I agree. The spiritual and the physical. I mean, before you know, while we're here and we have this physical world, I mean, we're all here. We all see it, right? Uh, um, but like, like you said, to me, it's clear that all of history. Like to me, one of my favorite ones to talk about is the Vikings. I'm sure you and your audience will like this. Sure. So, you got with them. And there's literally a stone I found it recently. The archaeologists have it. It's for Harold Bluetooth, which is literally like the symbol, like the company Bluetooth is from Sweden. They took the symbol. Yeah. It's an actual symbol of Harold Bluetooth, who was this Viking. He's the Viking who then, you know, basically uh, conquers Sweden and, and Denmark and these places and makes them Christian. So he's like the beginning of Christianity for them. And when that happens, you could even see it in their names, man. It hit me once with Leif Erikson, you know, the famous Leif Erikson. And when I found out that his dad was Eric the Red, and that's when I was like, that had to be the moment again, where like Christianity was now taking over. Like the, the world now is about these Christian kingdoms. And they had to, now they were even given like last names. Nobody even had a last name before then. So like you have the famous Eric the Red. That was his name, Eric the Red. Mm -hmm. right? Probably because he had a red beard or whatever, and his name was Eric, and that was his nickname. No last name. So then his son, Leif, turns Christian, right? So what's his last name? Eric's son. That's why you see that in so many names, right? Jacob's son, and this. And it, it, you see son in, in so many things. Uh, the Russians, I think it's the OV you see at the end, like Romanov. Is that what? Son of the Rome of Romans? Mm -hmm. Uh 
you know, so... I, I actually, uh, I, I can I can quickly interject there with a little yeah. uh, anecdote about my second name. Uh, my second name is Stobbs, S-T-O-B-B-S. And it actually goes back to the do- the Doomsday Book, so uh, around 1066 <laughs> period. Okay, so let's remove a thousand years. Let's say that's uh-huh. um, 66 when the takeover's happening, let's say, or 70, 80 or something. <laughs> um, uh-huh. it, yeah. it's, it's when second names were being introduced is where my name can go back to, this book where everyone began to have a second name. And my actual yeah. my actual second name, Stobbs, is a variation of Stib, which is S-T-Y-B-B. It's an old English word, which means tree stump. Um, and the reason, huh. and the reason that they called people Stibs, it was actually a taunt against the Viking invaders of England at the time, because they were short and stocky like tree stumps. So when, <laughs> so when, so when these, so these settlers who settled in England from the north, from Northumbria down, from Norway, um, they settled in like Leeds area, Newcastle area, the north of England, but not quite Scotland, and they, um. The, the locals made fun of them and said, look at these short people over here. And they called them Stibs to, to, kind, of, to, to kind of take the piss. But that stuck as a second name because that's what the nicknames were, you know, and it's uh-huh. kind of, and that's where I come from. That's where my lineage comes from. And I'm still in the north of England and we never really left, you know, and that's where you'll, <laughs> that's where you'll find the Stobs predominantly, you know, and the source of it all. There's actually um, a lay in the middle of northern England. There's a streak or a, a road called Stobbs Lane, um, which is right in the heart of uh, Yorkshire, Pontefract in Leeds, which is where they say they all settled. So it's still there. The history's there. But with this new perspective, it's, it's just interesting that that probably wasn't 1066. That was actually probably 70 AD. You know, that was yep, when the, the same t- time, with the same yep. time when everything was being Christianized, you know, and it goes in, in with this Viking, yep. this Viking mythos you were talking about. But carry on. Sorry, I, I interrupted. But go ahead. No, no, you're, you're, you're carrying on. I mean, it, that's what I was. That's what I mean, man. And then I found like, whether it was Chinese culture, same thing, you know, we look at their names and we're like, I I don't know what that means. (laughs) You know what I mean? But it literally means like Christopher or Joseph. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the nations turn Christian and, uh, you know, oh, this is a good time. So I don't forget Tartaria. Um, so we all love talking about Tartaria. Uh, I want to add a lot into that too. I was someone in the beginning, you know, pushing that and getting everybody, getting that to be a big topic. But then like right away again, I feel like there were certain things that people were putting out there that wasn't accurate. Um, One of them was like right away, everybody was like, every structure is Tartarian and like they were this world empire. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not true. Like, you know, that. There's nothing about Tartaria where they were a world empire. Mm-hmm. They they were the biggest empire when they were around, um, but they're basically pre-Russia. Mm-hmm. And what they go back to is the Golden Horde of Genghis Khan and this and that and the Khans. And uh, the Tartarians were a Christian empire. Uh, like we're talking about, all these nations were Christian. And... Uh, to me, Femenko and them, here it is. Like, I feel like you probably feel the same being from England. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but here in America, like, I feel like we don't know a lot about China and Russia. And like, we don't, we, everything's about like Europe mostly, you know? Uh, but Russia is huge and, and they're a big part of history. And and talk about Millennial Kingdom, what's the, the first city? St. Petersburg. Mm-hmm. I mean, was that for St. Peter? You know what I mean? Was the first church there for St. Peter? Um, we're told that they were the Orthodox, right? The Russians yeah. were Orthodox. So so um, here it is for Manko and them are Russian. So I, I take their research pretty serious and, and they do get into Tartaria stuff. And uh, to them, the Tartarians were ended in 1775. And that's when I started thinking like, Okay, so is this like when America, you know, it had nothing to do with like, you know, uh, English citizens rebelling against the English empire and fighting for freedom, that this was, you know, the takeover of Russian Tartarian empire that got crushed um, and erased from history. Uh, Rome basically takes over and they create this new Russian history uh with the Romanovs and these people. Mm. Um, 
but they weren't like a uh and encompassing the whole world they were just the biggest uh nation 250 years ago that nobody knows about yeah uh but in, to me uh i'm going with Fomenko and them and uh i believe their research is pretty accurate and they're saying that they were the original like golden horde they were part of the genghis khan that golden horde um which when you look into they were christian you know genghis khan was dealing with the pope uh talking about you know uh, God and, and setting up all these laws that were pretty righteous under Christianity. Um, I think that's what they're covering up, man. They, I mean, even the image they show us of Genghis Khan, I mean, when the books, they talk about him being redhead. I mean, but they show us this, like, you know, I, I don't know what you call, like, a black-haired Mongolian-looking character right kind of like but, a mix between like a, sam- a samurai and horseback but with like yeah, yeah, long, longer hair and yeah real, yeah it's not even the real image and the real story they're hiding the millennial kingdom that's what it, it definitely seems like um the yeah. other thing i think about too is we all know that they're destroying all these buildings right since the 1800s right with all these world fires and mm-hmm. you know they're constantly taking stuff down wars world war i mean world war one was yeah, right right these things right off the bat all the empires were involved in world war one which we considered tartarian all the european empires all the russian empires were involved the monarchy of the russia ended after world war one and then communism yep. took over, you know, which again is a highly disgusting belief system rooted in Gnosticism, you know. Um, yep. there, there was a whole, you know, the Bolshevist revolution as well. But even during all of this chaos and, and power grabs for kingdoms and empires, which seemed to happen during this early 20th century, so much was destroyed. Like, yeah, so much was destroyed. I, I've done a lot of time and research on the Jesuits and, and worked with, you know, uh, friends with Eric Phelps who wrote Vatican assassins, Johnny Cerucci and other Jesuit experts. And, you know, it's clear that the Jesuits since the 1800s have been causing all these wars and, and doing this stuff. Uh, they, they clearly created the Bolshevik revolution and communism and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is all recent creations from these, these demons in charge. Absolutely, but they, were, but they were all Christian at one point. That's that's for sure. Is it, well, yeah. It seems it seems like there was this this period in the, we call it the Middle Ages where everyone was just Christian as hell. It's like it was it was just yeah, do, it dominated everything. everything. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't they just could not stop talking about it. You know, it was just in every artwork. It was it was everywhere. Not not like I said, not just Europe. It, it it seemed to span yeah. quite a distance, you know. And again, I, I I agree with your saying, and a lot of what Fomenko shows is that a lot of a lot of history was made up, but not like made up, copy pasted is a good word for it. Yes, it's kind yeah. of like um, what was happening over here in one region of the earth happened in an identical fashion in this region of the earth on the other side, but the dates are separated by six hundred years. But it's talking <laughs> about the exact yep. same event. Just, yeah. just with different names and different characters, but everything else is identical, you know. And it's what he's Fomenko says about a lot of these events is, you know, the chronology is all over the place. It's it, these are the, this is one event that happened here yep. with one group of people, and it basically ends up shortening our time span drastically, doesn't he? Once he starts putting these events together, and I guess it's, a lot of it has to be guesswork about when the real date happened, but he's that's what all chronology is at the end of the day is it's trying to make it the best we can with the evidence we've got to try and put a timeline together in yeah. some way and like you said what was the name of the the predominant timeline we follow today it's it's scala what was it how did scaligarian scaligarian yeah, yeah and yeah, I, joseph scaliger people say he's, he was a jesuit but was it wasn't he a calvinist as well or something like that i've heard, I've heard that as well um he could have been yeah yeah well there, there was, were a lot of calvinists then there was a lot of stuff going on. Was it around the Reformation? Was it around that time when all this got I made? I think he was a little bit before that. I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. Because uh, he's early 1500s, I think. Right. Yeah. A lot of stuff was going on around that time period. <laughs> yeah. The 1500s was a crazy time for for everything. It was the Enlightenment, wasn't it? Yeah. They, call, they call it, you know. Uh, the, the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but then you know, I started thinking like even the names. Get this one. Maybe you and your audience never heard, but I. Like, we're told, like, these beautiful buildings, right, and, and stuff that they painted, which is beautiful. 
There's no doubt about it. But we're told like Michelangelo. And I'm like, the name itself, is that like Michael the angel? Like, again, was this, these, you know, the angels actually built this stuff. And they're just like, oh, yeah, Michelangelo. And that's like a, a play on Michael the angel. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the most beautiful temples out in France. It, it's like, you know, the cathedral of St. Michael or something like that. They're, they're saying that the saints built them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm starting to believe that they did. Are you talking about uh, Mont Saint Michael there in northern, off just yes. off the northern coast of France? Yeah, that thing looks incredible. Like, it is beautiful, absolutely and incredible. That the angels built it. Well, I, can believe yeah. it. I mean, you also even in, go back to Russia in the in the center of Moscow. You have Saint um, Basil's Cathedral. That thing is intense. Yeah. That thing is nuts. <laughs> like it's <laughs> and it's funny because there's something specific as well. Which this this happens. I'll share uh, another anecdote with you, which kind of which is why I'm drawn to this theory a lot and thinking about these concepts is I actually had a dream years ago. Um, it was maybe 2015 around that period. I'm, I'm guessing here, but it was not long after I left university. So let's say around that time. And I, I, there's a lot of stuff leading up to it, which makes no sense. Um, for, for example, I was in an open top limo in a hot tub with my old university friends but I, I felt like they were involved in something i wasn't and i was just kind of in for a ride but we were riding this limo on a cliff edge looking into a dark chasm we we're on the side of a mountain cliff edge like a, a road that was built into it but then i i never forgot this but i looked down into over the cliff and it, within it rising out of it were these enormous multicolored onion dome topped buildings just just enormous complex mass of onion dome structures building castle of some kind and it was glowing it was radiating at the atmospheric psychedelic colors from this glowing metallic a lot like saint basil's cathedral but so much larger we're talking like ten thousand times bigger you know and it was just it was beautiful, I, and I, I was in awe at this thing coming out of the ground, out of the darkness, you know, and it seared into my mind. And then years later, Tartaria starts becoming a theory, and I'm seeing this onion dome technology. People are saying they're actually like mercury holders that, uh, that extract uh, you know, energy from the ether and all this sort of stuff. And it's kind of like, why did I have this this powerful dream of onion dome architecture? And now, <laughs> and now this theory is coming up everywhere, and it's it's and and I'm wondering is is that what it looked like, it's like when a it, sign? Uh, it's well, like a sign. Maybe, <laughs> but at the height of the Millennial Kingdom, if that's what it was, or this Tartarian Kingdom at its peak, you know, when it was in full swing, and uh. they really were pulling energy from everywhere and powering everybody with free energy. I think I may have got a glimpse of what that looked like, and it was nuts. Like, I don't think we can compre- <laughs> comprehend just how insane that would have actually looked, you know, and yeah. um, our artwork pales at an ins- insignificantly compared to the reality of the situation. Um, but yeah, that, that image was seared in my mind. And then I felt like years later, an answer has been given to me. It's something to do with this, Paul. It's this history, this buried history, which is going to be uncovered, uh-huh. which is what I was looking into. I was looking at a buried temple coming out of the darkness at the side of a mountain, you know, and it was being uncovered. It was buried antiquitech, if you want to call it anything, you know. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, that's just always, but it's always that, that orthodox style of onion dome. That's a very distinct uh-huh. style, isn't it? That seems to go uh, across the lands of Siberia and Russia more than anywhere. Yep. And then their way of venerating Christ and and and, that, and I don't know. Just I'm just throwing that out there because I mean, yeah, they make it like it's a Muslim thing or something, right? Yeah, uh, like on, it's a Muslim. Yeah, on that actually, um, I think Noel just released a video and I managed to get a glimpse of a lot of it, trying to explain Islam because people are throwing the history. Oh, how do you explain Islam then? You uh-huh. know what I mean? And he he says no, that was an example of rebellion again. That was. A man who went out into the deserts where the demons dwell <laughs> and, and where people in rebellion dwell. And he started his own cult, basically, during the millennial reign. I think that was his end, uh-huh. goal. That was his end goal theory on it all. You know, and like I said, that, that has always been the case. There were people during that time who were still in rebellion. 
you know and and i think uh -huh. i think muhammad himself says you know um an angel came to him and told him to write all this stuff down and i think it says you know if they say they're in the desert don't go there but i think jesus said something like that you know <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of and that's pretty much what happened you know and uh, i thought that was interesting because to square that part of history then okay that happened during the millennial reign there was stuff happening during that time which it wasn't all sunshine and lollipops yeah, and, and wonderful you know it was there were there were people who were who were still out there corrupting everything as much as they possibly could it was a, well, it, as long as we as long as we have free will right anybody at any moment could choose to rebel right exactly yeah so i thought that was interesting anyway i've ranted on now i'll let, I'll let you carry on <laughs> if there's anything else no, you want to no. talk about. It, it's great you know and thank you again for letting me you know come and talk to you i mean this seems like you know flat earth back in 2012 days or whatever where it's like you couldn't talk to nobody about this stuff and yeah. then when you meet someone that that was into it you could just talk for hours right absolutely and, and that's how this feels with with you and shelly um you know I, i'm just really excited i i think that this is going to be the new big topic that everybody's going to keep talking about i'm gonna be pushing on kill the priest and everywhere i go um because yeah, it seemed like this, when you were when you were messaging me and explaining it to me it seemed like you didn't have anybody you could talk about this with like the circles you were already kind yeah. of walking in. I mean, the majority of people, yeah, other than my best friend, Matt, uh, Matt Whalen. Um, yeah, there's not, you know, and I, and even like uh, Noel, um, he, we talked on the phone, but, you know, I think he's just more like he just likes to do his work. He does his research and puts it out there, but it wasn't like a talk like, like me and you were doing. Or like you and Shelly, um, yeah. So I'm working on trying know, to. Get, I'm, I'm excited. On, I got to meet you. Yeah, I'm, wor <laughs> I'm working on trying to get in touch with Noel so I can have a conversation with him again. Um, it's just timing's an issue because obviously the, we're across the pond and it's it's we have families and stuff. So we're trying to figure something out. Yeah. Hopefully, I can have a conversation with him about this as well because um, he, he's he's done some great research and someone says they you know giving credit yeah. where, giving credit where it's due. It, it's 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 deep. Definitely, my favorite was that he walked the Americas. Cause I never heard that anywhere else. And when he did that video, that again was just like, to me, backing up the millennial kingdom that, yeah. you know, Jesus is here. Uh, and that, you know, these tribes and everybody, like he would settle the beef. Like we were just talking mm -hmm. about, there wouldn't be nations fighting each other because before it could even get to that, any type of d dispute, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus was there. Yeah, he talked. Uh, he talked. Thing. He talked to well as well about Brit the British Isles and how um, you know the like said the Arthurian uh, legends and all that type of stuff was the end of yep. their reign when Christ turned up. You know what I mean? And it's I think that was um, yep. it's just, it's great stuff. It's really great stuff. What he's got, honestly. Yeah, but you know, yeah, I mean, there's not many people, so like, yeah, uh, you know, kill a priest and a lot of these people. You know, you bring up the topic. You know, they, they, I don't think they know, you know, most of them aren't even into Christianity to start mm. with at this point, most people you meet. And then when you meet the people that are Christians, they're so locked into their, you know, dogma or what they were raised on that, like you already know, you're going to be looked at like a heretic and people get mad at you for even questioning certain stuff do you, uh, how, when, did my you get... jesuit circle these guys are flat earthers exposing the jesuits exposing germ theory i'm like oh yeah this is you know my circle and uh and then anything i'd say that you know they disagree oh, that, that's jesuit propaganda i'm like but wait can we talk about preterism for a second like well you know there was a jesuit priest like okay so a jesuit priest was a preterist so now that that's your that's all you got for me you know what i mean like let's have more of a talk man and uh that's why i'm really grateful for what you're doing and you know thank you for letting me you know be a little part of it and and the process that you're going to be doing no absolutely uh, look look anyone's i'm happy to talk with that this is a this is a therapy session i call it this because i understand how isolating yeah. it can be to to talk about contentious topics with loved ones and family <laughs> yeah. and be completely rejected by your friends as well you know and, and 
we i think me included and, and a lot of people listening here right now we have 312 people here you know i think they're all listening because they understand that they don't have people they can actually talk with this stuff about and it's it gets comforting to hear other people speak about these topics and then it's it's you don't feel as isolated and you realize there are other yeah. people who believe what i believe i am not alone in all of this and you know and and we do that by having an yeah. open dialogue you know and again i'm i'm not here to say i am 100 percent set on on most things i talk about I'm, I'm very much a like i said at the beginning hash out every idea to its logical conclusions and just roll with it for a little bit i'm happy to go along as though i am believing this theory for as long as it takes before the next thing comes along that <laughs> discredits it you know <laughs> it's not like um I, i'm the only thing that matters for me is that i have faith that jesus christ is who he says he was and that he came and died for yes. our sins and through him we can have everlasting life and we can be saved in the end whatever end is coming our way whether it's tribulation or the final great white throne judgment you know that's i, I profess that with my mouth i do it as much as i possibly can because that's what it really matters that's 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 the conspiracy yeah. at the end of the day that truth is what they're trying to really hide from you stuff like what time zone we're in or what what where these buildings come from is is, yeah. is second yeah. is. <laughs> it's it's secondary to all of this stuff that I, you know to the truth yep. of the matter the only reason like everyone says the great deception or the big conspiracy is x y or z and it's not it's just simply they want you to deny christ that's all it's, that's all it's about every it's a broad well path said. and they want you to take any path other than the christian path and they're even yeah. and what we're learning is they've even perverted the christian path so you don't even know where you are in time of yeah. the story so and a lot of people lose their faith because well we've been waiting for two thousand years where is he <laughs> you know? exactly it's kind of well what that is... was one of the things that got me like it's two thousand years why are pe you know people are still waiting mm -hmm. you well, know these people are crazy well people argue is it there's there's this dispensationalist time for everything you know and it's it's you've got to wait yeah. for these eras to come and pass but it's like the ball earth right you got to like come up with all these crazy long explanations to you know to to right away with your gut and instincts tell you you mm -hmm. know is yeah. how it feels right it's not even a I good mean, it's not even a good you thing you and shelly though. did great man i mean it clearly you guys went through revelations on these things it's clearly he was talking there's no way like shelly said once you see it it's like you can't see it any other way than it happened right away he was mm -hmm. they were talking about that generation yeah right i mean there's no that is just I can't go back on that also like like Shelley said. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, yeah, sorry. Well no <laughs> no I, I agree, this is what I mean. Like it, it and people always have these little comebacks. It's kinda like, well, he wasn't talking about their generation. He was talking about a future generation. It's like how have you got to that conclusion? Like you Yeah. Were, it's some kind of and mental that one quote where he said some won't see death and will be alive while I come back. And then we even so unless said, Jesus was like in the early 1900s, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't add up. No, and it, <laughs> but it even says those who pierced him will witness him come back. So those who lived and killed yes, and killed right. him, it's kind of like, yeah, they, they didn't live for two thousand years. Okay, and I believe I believe <laughs> the book at its word where it says he came back quickly, suddenly. Yeah, and yeah. he and he had, and it <laughs> seems like he did what he said he was going to do. He established a kingdom on earth. And and I think that and that would make sense why every nation and everyone became Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it was just some evil crusaders forcing it on people. You know, that's what they say, yeah. isn't it? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and everything's just like a twisted, bastardized version of the truth that we have for history now, with missing yeah. time periods, repeated copy paste stories all over the place, and it, none of it makes any sense whatsoever. But it's kind of people do not want to. I, I think a lot of people cannot accept such a grand deception. There is no way their brains could even process it. it. It takes a lot to get there. And hey, man, I thought that would flat earth, you know, 10 years ago. I'm sure you did in the beginning, too. But this is the thing. Right. It, it's taken 10 years worth of being in the game for me to then hear this millennial, <laughs> for me to hear the millennial kingdom theory and go, actually, you know, well, that makes sense. And the only reason it makes sense to me is not because I'm some ignorant idiot who doesn't understand the mainstream narrative of tribulation. That's all I've <laughs> that's all I've known for ten years. You know, it's it's actually because it squares a lot of these other things that I've also been researching for ten years on top of it. You know, it's it's a it's a puzzle piece that, and I've already almost completed the picture. I'm not saying I have, but I'm a, a lot further in than most people. You know, so when I see that piece, it's like I know where this goes. 
that can fit here, that can square that image over here, you know, and we're all trying to build the same puzzle here, you know, and we can argue about where pieces go, but that's it's a it's a valid piece that's a part of this. Is what I'll say to to bring yeah. in a, a, an analogy into this, you know, or a metaphor of some kind. Uh, <laughs> you can't just throw it out because you know I I I want to rule with Jesus for a thousand years. Or what one thing I hear a lot is, no, no, too many prophecies haven't come to pass yet. It's kind of like, and my argument is, how would you know? <laughs> like how would you how do you not know that that's already happened like you wouldn't know that's the problem you wouldn't know the only reason you believe that prophecies still need to come to pass is because they've manufactured some kind of cheap simulacrum of tribulation currently when you have all the resources yep. on in the world and all the power and all the money and full control over every institution church and media basically people's minds you can make it look like tribulations happening pretty easily, and it'll be yeah. nothing. It'll be nothing compared. I mean, that's to... clearly what Israel was created for, and you know. The they, thing is, they, they don't even hide or suppress people pushing the tribulation is now thing. Okay. Yeah. Mainstream sources push that narrative. <laughs> yeah. It's on TV. It, they they let pastors on television talk about the second coming of christ and tribulations about to pass they let it on that box in the corner of the room nothing gets on that box that hasn't been vetted <laughs> yeah nothing okay and there's no way that they would mainstream media allow pushing of of that narrative if, if it wasn't to their benefit no chance it's no a... you guys are dead on man the way you guys were talk about it the same way i see it man yep you, you're yeah. crushing it and I, I think you're dead, dead right. They they wouldn't. They, they're doing that because then, like you and Shelley were saying, then you could say, oh, it didn't happen the way it, it was said it was going to happen. Or, mm -hmm. you know, it's just for you to have doubt in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, real quick, I wanted to tell you and share with your audience, I have a 97-year-old family member. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to reach out to. He's very smart. He still has his wits about him uh born in you know like 1925 or, or something like that in new york in, in the bronx and uh i right away was like uncle joe it's my mom's uncle uh her, and i'm like uh do you remember the orphan trains and he right away was like yep i remember the orphan trains i said so they were real and he was like yeah the orphan trains were real um they went on for a while he said that they were slave labor for all the farms they had all these farmers and, and this was like the slave labor. He said it was the Catholic church behind it. I said, where did the babies come from? He said, nobody knew. Even in the thirties, there was like all this controversy of where was the church getting these children from. Mm. Um, I've through time have come up with the theory that those are Slavic slaves, Slavic, uh, Russian Tartarian offsprings. Like the, the, the men, you know, the men were crushed. You got the women, probably couldn't do anything children were taken i think it's possible that that that's who those those orphans were uh the remnants of the tartarians or slavic people mm. um but and then another thing i said where do, i said were they building stuff or were the stuff there already he said the buildings were already here i said okay good that's what i thought um and then i asked what is the biggest change you've seen in your life and he said, without hesitation, he said, humanity. I said, really? What were you say? He said, back then we used to have pride. He said, we didn't have much. You might have had one pair of shoes and one pair of nice clothes, but you took pride. You took pride in how you worked, how you appeared. Uh, everybody had a lot more pride and were good people. He said, uh, he said it was the 1960s when it all ended, he said, and everything changed. Um, and now people have lost their humanity. Uh, and, you know, to me, that's showing how quick that this could have happened, mm -hmm. you know, and that these people were still like coming out of that probably millennial kingdom, you know, where everything was just based off of, you know, God's laws and uh, everything was, you know, about church. And it probably was up until recently, you know, and then the devil was let loose and it took a little while right of all these wars and moving things around taking things out of the bible 
telling people they're on a ball. I asked him that too. I said, did they teach it in evolution when you were in school? He was like, no. I said, did they teach you that you were on a ball? He was like, no. <laughs> mm. So these are all recent things, you know, that we've all been brainwashed into. Uh, yeah, it doesn't take it doesn't take long. You see, it only takes about two generations no. to completely rewrite history. It really doesn't take. Yeah, I think I think people have Stalin said three. Yeah, they have way too much like people have way too much stock and trust in authority. Okay, and it, it's it's quite simple, really. The winners get to write history. Okay, why do you trust the narrative that has been put in front of you in ex, you know, yeah. just implicitly? And I think it's because hum humans are good. We try to be. We know we understand good, yeah. good and evil. And I think it's it's that fallacy that we can't believe that people could be so evil because we're not evil. <laughs> yeah, it's that. Yeah, that's a problem for a lot of people. It's like a big flaw. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge flaw we have. Um, because we want we want to see the best in the world, and we we understand you know. I I I open doors for people. I try and be good for people. I'm not saying being. By the way, do not misinterpret what I'm saying, listeners. I'm not saying your your good deeds will get you into heaven. You need Jesus Christ to be saved. We're all sinners. Blah blah blah. I get all that. All right. So don't argue with me about deeds and works. Okay, I'm not talking about that. But what I'm saying is, the laws written on our hearts. We know when we're doing good and we know when we're doing wrong, and we try and do our best usually. But there's a contingent of people who live with us who do not. They have no empathy. They are they are psychopathic narcissists through and through. Okay, and we assume the best intentions on them. We kind of layer our own way of being on them, and that's our, that's literally where we slip up here. That's where that's why we've been and, fooled so much. I think that famous quote. I don't know if it was Napoleon or someone, but like absolute power corrupts is something I think about all the time. Is I've unfortunately i'll put it that way unfortunately i've been around some rich powerful people in my life in, in connecticut and uh i've told people in the past how the masons tried to get me to join and blah 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 but if you've ever been around someone who's like and again i haven't been at like you know a rock i'm not talking like rothschild rockefeller level but pretty powerful rich families and it's different man they're they're different <laughs> and, and uh, I think that the power, you know, if you're going to be in a position where you have all this money or power, it's it's very easy for these people to just think that they're gods and that mm -hmm. they should be able to, you know, go on an island and, you know, like an Epstein Island and do what they did there, you know, or, or yeah. sacrifices or, or whatever, or, you know, that they're better. Like when I've been around these people they clearly think they're better just because they have money. Uh, they think anyone who has less than them is less of a person. Mm -hmm. You know, they get, and uh, so, you know, I, I think that's the hard part where, you know, that's why I mentioned earlier where I think a lot of this were actually righteous families and and, and they were doing the right thing. Like I'm someone who defends K even King James with a lot of people. Um, to me, again, it seems like a hit piece. Everything on King James is now like he's a homosexual. He was this. He was that. And I'm like, if they're obsessed with making it like he was bad, he was probably good. Then I found out the whole thing with the whole Jesuit plot to blow him up and British Parliament, the whole 5th of November thing, Guy Fawkes. Um, and, and I'm like, I started looking in and it was like, you know, the only law that King James really enforced was, you know, sodomy, uh, you know, like. Like it was like they they I think they were righteous people doing the best they could, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and then when the devil was let loose, these people that were in positions of power, it's really easy to then become like these gods, you know, where you think you're better than everyone. And mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've seen like a small glimpse of these people and and they don't think like us. That's why it's hard. Like. Can, can you imagine what it would be like to be Rothschild? Like, <laughs> no. how could you not think that you're like special? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, the thing I is, I can do anything I want. I could just buy this island. I, I, I could do whatever. I could buy your government. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like, 
Well, it's a whole different level. They have bought the governments. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Is, yeah, we know that in our recent history. But no, it's not even. It's not. That's on like a grand scale. And yes, that that's incomprehensible. These people consider themselves gods. Yeah. Gods among men. But even on even on lower levels, where you were talking about, you know, these secret society members at lower levels. Uh-huh. I've I've just been doing a lot of research the past couple of weeks into the royal order of the jesters which is a step above Freemasonry and shrining. So, uh-huh. you know, you become a shriner after going through Freemasonry and then you yeah. can you can be invited to be a jester, a Royal Order of the Jester member, an ROJ member. Yeah, there's so many orders. Yeah, but yeah. The, the, the jesters, you can't find any information on them. The internet's kind of been expunged, but you, you can, if you dig enough find remnants of what happened to them and they're still around but they have uh-huh. got they've gone deep underground as of like 2008 2005 they've they've took really? all they took interesting them, they i'm took... gonna have to find out more from you on this well i mean i see the shriners everywhere i've met shriners you know i see yeah. them everywhere but see... yeah you don't see the jester you don't you don't but the they are higher than shrining the the next level okay but anyway huh. i'm writing because i'm writing the book on the clowns and the nephilim connection and demons and stuff. yeah and, great work you've done on that yeah but on this topic I, i've i had i've had to read about what they got up to and it's it's awful what these people do to people it's kind of what they got caught doing yep. and we've only just seen those who got caught you know what i mean <laughs> and and in 2008 2012 um Three three jesters were caught um, t- trafficking, sex trafficking prostitutes across state lines to a jester convention to to pimp <laughs> these to pimp these women out. Okay, but it wow. turns out it's a part of a hu- a much bigger sex trafficking network all across the entire of the uh-huh. United States and every state. You know, these are just the ones that got caught. And the three men who got caught, one of them was a supreme judge. And another, <laughs> and two of them were. One of them was the judge's uh, assistant, and another one was an ex sheriff deputy. And yep. these these are ex high ranking members of high society within within yep. you know people's communities, you know. And it, it turns out the judge actually started whistleblowing and loads of stuff to get a reduced sentence. Uh, the cop, the cop, the ex cop didn't go to prison, but was given a ten thousand pound fine and a suspended two month sentence, mainly because I think the people knew he would get killed in prison because he's an ex cop. <laughs> it's kind of, but you, it, but that's just that's just one thing. Never mind the mass amounts of tax evasion these things do, for, and, and claim to be charitable organisations using government funding and uh, charitable funds to fuel orgies and sex parties. But then it gets really <laughs> dark. Then it starts getting into child sex trafficking and child sex tourism. And it turns out 19 jesters went through the court systems um, for basically traveling to Brazil and raping nine to 13 year old girls repeatedly every year, going on fishing oh. trips. You know, and th- these are Shriner funded fishing trips using the funds from charities that they claim is uh, tax exempt. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is how it all yep. really goes. And uh, one example, um, they hired one of their own charitable organizations to collect money for their shriner hospitals so it was all an inside job and they raised 43 million and the hospitals only saw 5 million and they kept the rest for themselves (laughs) this is about this is how they actually work the rest was for a sex ring yeah Yeah. but but it it turns out you know shriner law so don't forget every every jester is a shriner not all shriners are jesters. It's like every single shriner is a mason but not all masons are shriners. there's levels you know but every they believe they have their own law, which is above the law of the land, and they only follow Shriner law. And one of the main laws is you protect your brothers at all costs. So that means yes. if you're a judge presiding over this case, you get them off. Do you get what I mean? This is how it is. And it's, it's funny you're saying this because it reminds me of, you know that, did you see the new movie that just started streaming, uh, Killer of the Flower Moon, something like that? I've not. No, no, I don't. I don't really follow media, to be honest. But go, go ahead. No, no, it's it's a movie. It's a true story about the Native Americans, and uh, you know Martin Scorsese made it. De Niro's in it. Leonardo DiCaprio. You know, it's a, a big movie that just recently came out, and because it's a true story, I said, all right, let me watch it. And this is literally what I was just talking about on Killer Priest Show last week. I brought this up because it even shows the masonry. It got. I literally was just talking about like what you were talking about with the the Masons and them controlling the court system. Mm-hmm. They literally show you in this movie 
uh, De Niro saying how he's this 32nd degree Mason. He's basically runs the whole town. They're killing off these natives and stealing all the money from them. Uh, one of the parts they he's beating Leonardo DiCaprio. He's spanking him in the back in the Masonic temple. They're showing mm-hmm. you right in the Masonic temple. He's beating him. Uh, and then I found out after it again with the, with the, the judges and everybody, uh, they're all connected. They're all Masons. And, uh, he, he was let go. He, he was given a life sentence. That's because it was trial by jury. So again, they can't do nothing about the jury. Mm-hmm. So the jury was like, yeah, this guy's guilty clearly. So they have to like say, oh yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to give him life in Levensworth. But then like 10 years later, the Masons got him out and he was let out of jail. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so yeah, like what you're saying, like, uh, I totally get it. I- I'm all into it. The Masons and these people, they have to let their brother out. Mm-hmm. I told people this years ago and, and it was funny because I went into a court. This wasn't in my hometown, so they didn't know me. And uh, I threw up Masonic hand signs to the judge. The judge right away uh, treated me with respect and dismissed everything. And I walked out of there <laughs> and I told everybody, you know, it's clearly, you know, these people are Masons and they have to help Masons. So if you're in court, you could just pretend that you're a Mason. <laughs> and, uh, and I actually did it once and it worked. Wow. That's an interesting uh, bit of advice, though. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I literally just scratched the surface there with how deep the... Because th- this is the point. They actually have their own law, which is above our law, and they don't follow our yeah. laws. They follow the, the laws of the shrine. That's the laws they follow, not us, okay? They they don't care about the law of the land. They really yep. do not care about that at no, all. No, it's the order. Like, it's, the, their, yeah. it's their society They're it's above everything. They are above the law in their eyes. They are gods in their own eyes. This is the yep. thing, and we are just peons to them the plebs yeah goyim sheep whatever <laughs> fodder <laughs> fodder things to use for their own entertainment and 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 to get the jollies you know what i mean and and that's basically it they they just use us for for fun and this is the thing about the jester they they claim to travel the world spreading the gospel of mirth of joy and happiness and laughter and <laughs> and it's kind of like yeah whose enjoyment are you really spreading the gospel for your own you know they go around raping children basically you know these people are are evil evil people you know at the highest yeah, levels I don't and, know, yeah. <laughs> and they're the ones that get invited into this this order you know the ones they think will get away with and they make yeah. they, they make their members do this stuff so they can blackmail them so they can't leave it's really yeah pernicious and evil and and they have the highest people in the orders you know the, the most powerful people in these orders and it, it mainly it's mainly more of an american thing i'd find because this is where these things were established mainly these fraternal these fraternal orders it's like america has been turned into some kind of satanic experiment where all the i think it's a masonic i i think that 1776 was the masonic creation yeah of america yeah, I, I don't believe the whole nonsense of fighting for freedom against the English and this and that. I, I don't buy that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's that funny um, phrase. Uh, I made a meme about it. It's about um, Freemasonry is literally a reference to it was free real estate when Jesus left. They, they, <laughs> you know, they they took them. They took all the masonry for themselves. You know, they stole it all basically and <laughs> just moved in and claimed ownership and claimed that they built it. Um, yeah, found it. We founded it. <laughs> we founded it. Yeah, it's established, founded, you know, whatever that means. But um, yeah, so we've been going for almost two hours now. We've got 20 minutes left, Vinny. Um, okay. I think I think it might be good just, just to wind it down a bit um, and mainly just talk sure. about, because obviously this is a, a truth of therapy session and it's kind of, how have you found being a truther? Let's just call it that. Like, I mean, we all go, th- we all go through it, you know, it, especially when you first discover these type of things, you try and tell your friends and family and you end up losing half of them Yep. and they think you're More insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's talk about that for a bit. I mean, how have you, how, how did you find it? What was it like for you? Was it, you know, do you have any stories of uh, what it was like initially? Yeah. Uh, I got lots of stories, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, well, to me, it was 9-11, you know, living in New York and 9-11. I was like 21, 22 years old when it happened. And then I ended up uh, finding Bill Cooper and Bill Cooper changed my life, turned me into, you know, the conspiracy researcher. 
like you, understanding conspiracy. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, that started me. And then I just, yeah, like you said, right away you go to your friends and family and then you realize, you know, you just start getting into fights. Uh, you, you know, I was someone that was fighting with the cops. I was, you know, with the sovereigns, you know. Uh, I, I was fighting with everyone. Um, didn't want to believe in Jesus still. Was thinking, you know, Bible's written by, you know, Zeus or, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and and But then I started seeing, like, all the people that I really looked up to that were either dead or in jail, like Fritz Bregmeier, um and Cooper and these others. And I'm like, why are they all Christians? You know, like, they're so smart. Why do they believe in that? You know, that book where they're waiting 2,000 years for this guy and blah, 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 you know. And uh, and it started making me, like, think, you know, more and more. And then I just started meeting, like, these great Christians. And and then it was actually these these black Israelites that were on the corner in New York City arguing with Rastafarians and others. They're holding up the King James Bible and they're talking about King James and the Bible being real and... And they're talking about Jezre Borgia and, and all this stuff. And, and I'm like, what is this stuff? And, and I started, that's when I started finding the Catholic Church, the Jesuit stuff. But, uh, you know, I had a lot of money at the time. I had a roofing business. Uh, I was around some people with money. They were trying to get me to be a Mason. I, I, I refused. Even though I wasn't Christian, I just, I was already a conspiracy theorist and hated these people, thought the Masons were the epitome of evil, you know? And I'm like, no. They're like, oh, Vinny, it's not what you think. It's not bad. I'm like, then why is everything a secret? And they couldn't answer that. And, you know, and they're like, Vinny, what do you want? You know, and I'm just like, you got nothing I want. <laughs> like, uh, So I ended up getting robbed. I lost everything. Um, so I literally, the money I had left, I didn't start another company. I went and bought land. I, I thought that, a lot of people were going to join me and we were going to like, you know, be off the grid and this and that, um, and get ready for, you know, the fall of America. And, uh, and then while I was out there in the woods by myself, nobody came. And then I started feeling bad for myself, was wondering like, why is all this stuff going on? You know, I'm a good person, blah, 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 pity party for myself. And it's desperate times. And then all of a sudden, the next day, I meet some Christian who gives me a job. I start working. And they give me a Bible. It's the first time I had a Bible. I go back. Now, I literally work. I go back to my property. I didn't have nothing built on it. It was just land. So I'm like living in a tent by a campfire. And I'm sitting there. And I'm looking up at the moon. And I and I know the moon's right there. And it's like a hologram. And I'm like, I'm like, man, like. This whole world is like a big satanic lie. Like, and, and and I'm like, God, is is Jesus the truth? And and he like, I felt like God like just grabbed my head and like put it down to the Bible. So I like forced me to open it. I didn't. I was like still fighting. Like I don't want to open that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, finally, I did. And the minute I opened it, the first page. It was like these words just hit me and it was Jesus, you know, speaking, you know, they're going to hate you like they hated me and per and just going into all this stuff and everything just hit me. And, and I looked up at the moon and, and I was like, God, like I asked and, and you said, this is it. And I said, uh, I know the earth's flat. I know, I know this and that. I'm not doubting not no more. And you're saying, and Jesus is the truth. And without knowing really anything about it or the Bible, I just at that moment was like, all right, he's the truth. And, and I'm going to I'm going to try to follow him. And it's been a journey of that, you know, trying to learn more and try to become a better Christian and understand everything. Um, and I, I'd say that, you know, at first it was always focusing on exposing all this bad stuff. And I still, you know. I still like to expose things that go on, but I think people like me and even including yourself and Shelly and anybody doing this stuff, uh, we got to give people also stuff, good stuff, right? Like a positive message, right? I'm sure maybe you and your audience are hoping for me to give a positive message right now. And that's what I'm going to give. Uh, you know, recently I've done a lot into uh, studying the afterlife 
the scientific stuff. There's thousands of cases of people who have died and come back to life and, and, and science can't explain stuff. All right. Science can't explain your, your natural senses. You can't, you can't, you can't explain when a person is brain dead, their eyes are covered, their head is covered. They've been dead. Their heart's not moving. Their brain isn't, has no, no life to it. And yet they come back and talk about everything that went on in the room and everything that was said by everybody in it. And all the doctors who are atheists are just baffled. There's tons of evidence to prove that this isn't it and that life is everlasting. The soul, the, the consciousness is everlasting. And even science proves that. And, and I've been spending a lot of time trying to find miracles and great stories. I found one uh, and I've talked to the guy who directed the movie. It's called the Copeville Miracle where angels came down. These children still to this day. Well, they're not children no more. This happened in like the 80s or 90s here in America in a small town called Cokeville. And these angels came down. Everybody there talked about all the children told their parents and this and that. They were saved by angels. I recently posted a video about an amazing story about five missionaries who got killed in Ecuador in 1957 by the Wodani tribe. But the, the great part of it is <laughs> that the people who died, one of the guys is like, wife, five-year-old son, and sister went back there to these people who killed these people, their family. And the Wodani tribe talked about angels coming down. This is a Wodani tribe. This isn't Jesuits. This isn't American television. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is the Wodani tribe. And it's an amazing story. I, I've talked to the guy, Steve Saint, the child of the guy, uh, one of the five missionaries, uh, who who grew up and, and lived his life with one of these Wuda? They most of them converted, most of them converted to Christianity after they killed these five missionaries, and the missionaries were lying there on the ground. Angels came down, and there was choir music. And what's funny is they didn't even know what choir music was until like years later when they went to a church for the first time, and they were like, "Wait, I never. This is the music that the angels were playing." <laughs> Uh, it's a powerful scene. There's a movie. It's called uh, End of the Spear. It's the true story of this. Um, so these are things that I, I try to spend time on and share great stories like this. So we don't just focus on, you know, the devil and all the deception going on. We also got to talk about all this great stuff, right? That we're going to live forever. You're going to you're going to be reunited with your ancestors. Uh the people that have been doing all this evil stuff, you don't have to do anything. Jesus already did it, and God's going to take care of that. We don't have to form a, an army and go to war with them. They're going to lose in the end. You know, all we have to do is keep sharing our love, our love and, and forgiveness with each other. Uh, and, and that's the hardest part for me, and I admit that. Um, you know, Vinny from the Bronx <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, was raised uh, not to be Christian. I I'll tell you that. And, and uh, you know, it's hard to uh, love the enemy. But, um, you know, that that's the vibe and stuff I've been getting into and I'm really focusing on. And and that's what I'd like to share, you know, to close this out with you is, is the positive that that all of this proves that we're not crazy. Right. That this is real. That Jesus is real. You know how many people tell you Jesus isn't real. This is the same. These are the same people that that that'll you know quote Plato, and it's like, can you can you show me that Plato was real? What because they found like two books in history. Do you know how many? You know how much evidence there is for Jesus more than George Washington, more than basically anyone you ever heard of. The whole world is based on this guy, and now we're living in a world that's based on hating him and making you not believe in him in the Bible. All it does is, is is reassure that 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 we're right and that this guy is real and he is the threat. He's the only thing they're scared of and he's the only thing that could save us. And, uh, you know, you and your audience and all of us, we're, we're on the right path. And, uh, you know, uh, like you said before, too, we're not to have fear. You know, what's there to fear if you know that this isn't that this is just like some physical matrix to be tested in? 
to see, you know, if you love God <laughs> or you love yourself and want to be God, right? Um, you know, you wouldn't feel bad about, you know, the people like, oh, how could there be a God? To, oh, the poor kids that died, innocent person that died. Well, that innocent child that got aborted, that didn't do anything wrong, that child's going to heaven. You know what I mean? Like, that child isn't, that child's in a better place than here. You wouldn't be upset, you know? So a change of mindset. Once you really, really have that faith, which I feel I do and why I have this faith that I know. I could die right now and I know that it ain't it. That, you know, the, the, the physical, this world is gone. My body might be laying on the ground and people look at me dead. But my consciousness is, is going to the spirit realm where I know Jesus Christ is king. And, uh, you know, that's the, that's the great news that, that we all have to, to stick on to. That there's more than this, no matter what happens. Absolutely. No, that is the good news. Um, this this is one thing I think a lot of people need to remember. You know, like I said, and I said at the start, the stuff we talk about is not a salvation issue. Okay, just keep your eyes on Jesus, and everything will be okay. It's it's, it's kind of as simple as that. And I, I've noticed a rise. He made it simple. He Come made on. it simple. His yoke <laughs> his yoke is easy exactly because he knows we need we need it we need it simple. You know, but there yeah, are the Jews obviously weren't getting it right. <laughs> the Jews weren't getting it right. Too many laws, too complicated. Uh, he made it pretty simple. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. A lot of those Jews and Pharisees, you know, we were talking about this in the Telegram group. They did follow the law to a T. Yeah, but the but, the pride stop exactly made them fail because that's the problem you know they they thought they were better than people and other people simply exactly. because they followed all the rules you know and that's not what jesus that's not what he's about at the end of the day you yeah know, and it, they were about power right it's not about power either it's about serving exactly you serve here and then you're gonna have it better in the next life yeah you know why not you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like everybody's like so invested in this world because they don't actually have that true faith. They mm -hmm. think when they die, it's over. I really think that's the issue for most, even for most Christians, yeah. because they probably don't have the real faith. They probably think like, well, you know, in the back of their head, I'm a ball. I'm on a ball. The Bible, you know, I hope it's real, but I go to church on Sunday. I, you know, hopefully yeah. I'm going, <laughs> you know what I mean? But they don't really have that faith. No. Well, that's, that's the thing. Again, I'm not trying to give a free pass for people. You know, sin as much as you want and you'll be okay because as long as you're saved. It's kind of that comes back to the kingdom is within comment that Jesus made, which I think yeah. needs clarifying. It's look, if you haven't got Jesus in your heart, then yeah, your works and faith is, is dead. It's dead faith, you know, at the end of the day. Um, you need to you need to know that the kingdom is within you. If you can know that and you know yeah. and you know who the king is. <laughs> you know, and it's not, yeah. and don't as long as long as you Can't don't have a kingdom without a king. Yeah, as long as you don't make that king <laughs> yourself, you'll be okay. You know, understand it's not you. Like it's kind of Christianity's whole thing. We're sinners who need a savior. Okay. Yeah. So one then, of my favorite quotes is, "You're." He says, "God, th God sees you all as filthy rags." So even the best person you think, we're just filthy rags, really, at the end of the day, yeah. in God's eyes. It doesn't matter, yeah, so. how, how many <laughs> good things you do, all your good works are, are nothing. Yeah, because, exactly. <laughs> because Because your heart within you, within yourself, you know, it's it's evil. It's, you're, it could be like the Shriners, right? You, you're doing charity, but for a sinister plan. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's where you get into karma and stuff, isn't it? You know, The thing is, that there's this rise of Gnosticism lately, I find, and trying to push this, Jesus is just a symbol for the sun. We are all Jesus. We all have the ability to be like God and, <laughs> and all this type of stuff. And it's and, and honestly, I've done, I'm sick of it. It's get, off, yeah, get it's away from being, that. Wanting to be God again. It's the same old life. I'm happy God, serving. You know? I, I got no problem. I'm going to serve him till I die. Yeah. And, and and I hope that, you know, I, I do good enough. <laughs> and I, I tell people all the time, like, I, I, I swear to you, I feel like the angels and them are watching. Like, so that's why, like, you know, let's be funny. Let's smile. Let's have fun. Let's share love. Let, let's let the angels have a good show as we laugh off Lucifer. That's what I call LOL. That's laugh off Lucifer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, no fear, right? Just love. Fear and, not, and, fear not, absolutely, and and, and Jesus, no, Jesus, 
you know, he made it clear, you know, above all things, just love one another. It's kind of that easy, you know. It's, it's just, that simple. That's, what, that's all he needs. Just That's what he wants us to do more than anything, you know. And that comes with being long-suffering and patient, you know, and understanding and, and not... Yep. Don't, don't accuse or condemn people for the things they've done in the past as long as they're sincere about changing and trying to be better, you know. And it just love. Lo- and, yes. you know, love is it's not... It takes work to love somebody. You know, it really does. Like I said, it's hard to love those Especially people. the enemy, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's hard to love the enemy. You know, it, it is. And, and, but try. And I've had that problem with so many Christians, especially the one, you know, for people who, I did a lot with this guy named Johnny Cerucci. Again, an Italian from the East Coast. He's all about the Jesuits. But it's like the anger and you know, it's like, well, this person's, you know, uh, an agent, this one, you know, I can't stand that. And you get that a lot in, in some of the truth communities where mm-hmm. it's like this person, well, well, the, you know, Bart Sabrell, I, I love Bart Sabrell. I, I, like, I mean, love, I consider him a friend. I've done many shows with him and he's the guy who, you know, got punched in the face by Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> he's done the most to expose the moon landing as a hoax, but yeah. for some reason he still thinks he's on a ball. Right. And mm-hmm. I'll get Dave Weiss to be, oh, he's an agent. He's, it's like, man, like, stop judging others. Stop thinking the worst, you know. Um, and, and even if someone was as bad as you think they are, they still they still could find, they still could find the truth, but, you know. Yeah. They could still change, you know. Stop condemning people. And, and uh, yeah, man. We got we got to have love and and Johnny and some of these people. It, it's just like you know Donald Trump. Listen, I know I, I call out Donald Trump all the time, but why focus on you know he's this he's going to hell, or, or you know uh, don't focus on that. You know what I mean? Well, the, that, that's how I am. It's not for us to make that judgment at the end of the day. It's between him and God. Exactly. You know, and and focus. We need to focus on being the, the best we can. So we can help others, you know, and just do. And I think a lot of people think a little, sometimes a little bit too big as well. I think there's another pride issue Christians have. They think they can save the world, yeah, and they can <laughs> save you, it, you know. And why, why, why don't you try with your family first? Why don't you try with your neighbor? <laughs> exactly. Why don't you try it's with so your community funny. first, rather than going out there and trying to save everybody all around the world? You know, why don't you start with home and make your immediate area better, and you know, and and do exactly. the work, do the work there. And if everybody did that, then everything would sort itself out. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and we all loved each other. <laughs> and then, yeah, and love, love thy neighbor. Simple. You know, love, love, love the Lord God with all your heart, and love thy neighbor. You know, it's it's pretty straightforward. That's and this thing a lot of people like, and and hate the hate the hate the sin, but not the love sinner. the sinner. Yeah, love the sinner, <laughs> hate the sin. Yeah, that's a classic one, isn't it? And it, it, it's it's a cheesy quote, but it's true. That's what it comes down it to is. at the end of the day, you know. Because yeah. at, at the end of the day, I remember when I was the, the same person who believed Jesus was just a symbol for the sun. And all, and I was a hedonist taking drugs every yeah. other weekend, exploring my consciousness and astral realms, thinking I was a god. <laughs> you know, I've been there. I get it. I really do. Yeah. I, so I have empathy with these people who leave these type of comments. And I, I get a lot, you know. And, I, and a lot of the time, I, I, I admit, I can get a bit sarcastic. Okay, maybe it's the the British within me. I don't know what it is, you know. And I'm not I'm not perfect. So don't get me wrong, but you know when when you when you have to deal with it like twenty times a day, <laughs> d- d- you know, <laughs> Lose your a little. I, I, there's only so much I can I can do. But I'd say I I empathize with these people as well because it's like I was them, but they don't believe I was once them because they're doing it better than I did or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> or, or I can't possibly understand where they're coming from because I'm just a Christian and they assume I was raised in a church or something. And exactly. That's something like, me and you share. Yes. And, That's how I feel on the Killer Priest podcast in these places. You know, same way as you're saying. Yeah. But but like I said, I, I'm, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't not talk to them as, as a person. Just because they don't believe what I believe, I don't always feel like I get the same. Yeah. I get the same back, unfortunately. But well, I feel like know. with your name too, Paul. Let's bring in your name, Paul, and my favorite actual apostle, uh, Saul, who turned into Paul. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like he—he he was what he was—he was born a Roman citizen, but was also Jewish. Like he had both worlds, kind of. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and that's sort yeah. of like with me and you, like. 
we're not coming from, you know, the, the typical Christian who was raised by their family and went to church every Sunday, right? We're raised, we're people that were like them, right? Mm-hmm. Like when I'm on the Killer Priest podcast, like those, that's how I saw things. So I know where they're coming from, like you said. Like we know where they're coming from because we were there. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's why we were kind of made to talk to these type of people. You know how many Christian people like I, I couldn't go on that. I couldn't go on some of the things I go on. And I'm like, why not? <laughs> you know, like maybe I was just built for this. You know, I grew up in the Bronx and I, you know, it's just we were built for it. And and I think you're the same. Like you were built to talk to people that aren't Christians but are looking for it. You know what I mean? Or or need it. And uh yeah. Maybe again. I'm, I'm not looking to get myself an ego over this. Um, I just, I just like to talk a lot. And, <laughs> no, um, no, no ego. Just like you know. me. Just like you know, your, your name Paul. I mean, uh, it, it sort of could be a thing, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it's symbolic. And I mean, I think my mum literally just picked the first name she saw out of a baby book when I was born. <laughs> I don't think there was much thought behind it, which again might be more interesting than than the, yeah, anything else. But. Uh, and uh, my grandma was a Catholic, but I don't think that has anything to do with what my mum decided to do with me and my name because she's not a religious person. So I don't know. I, yeah. I could theorize it on end, but um, I, I, <laughs> I, I, again, I'm not, I'm not a church. But leader. you could see it. You, you remember what it was like not believing in Jesus. Yeah, like, right? said, Just like, like said, all of us flat earthers remember what it was like believing in a ball. <laughs> yeah, and, and like most Christians remember what it was like to believe that, you know, we were waiting for the millennial kingdom to come. It's kind of like, <laughs> yes. you, could, you could do yes. that for anything, you know, and, and this is this thing, we're all just trying to figure it out together. I'm doing it in love and I'm trying to, I'm trying to present information in a calm, cool, collect and funny manner because that's how this we have to great do it. That's how we have to this deal with great. this stuff, you know, because it's scary stuff at the end of the day. And if we can't, if we don't laugh, we, honestly, we'll just cry. Um, yes, you, that's all it comes down yes. to, isn't it? <laughs> you're doing great, man. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Well, thanks. No, thanks. Thanks for uh, coming on to the Truth of Therapy sessions. I think it's been a good little conversation we've had there, and I think people have enjoyed it. It seems like we've had uh, over 300 people watching at once, which is great. Nice. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little conversation too. Uh, Vinny, would you would you want to come back and uh, do this again sometime? Oh yeah, sure. You're you're a brother now to me. You're I, I consider you a friend. And anything that you want, or you know, anything. Sure. <laughs> uh, I, I'll tell. Okay. Well, I, I'll. Um, <laughs> I won't. I won't take much from you. But if you say anything, maybe. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I might do another. Um, a well, pretty... maybe I could also like get like my friend Fritz Brigmeier or someone to come and do it, like a special show with you get into bloodlines or, well, or things like that whatever we'll have, we'll have a back and forth we'll figure that out because yeah. i'm actually pretty booked up for the next three months every weekend i'm on podcasts nice. I've, got, I've got people coming on my awesome. podcast and um i don't i try not to do too much during the week because then it cuts into family time with my wife and stuff like that you know um tomorrow oh, know. tomorrow i'm actually talking and this is an announcement for people listening but i'm actually talking tomorrow with um Theron from um toad house seven homesteader i think that's what he's called um and he's big on the millennial kingdom stuff i think he's actually trying to get to the north pole he's trying to organize a trip um to go and see what's awesome. to see what's going on for himself <laughs> so it'll be interesting to get him on tomorrow for another conversation so he can share all his thoughts on the millennial kingdom and where he comes at it from um, he's a lot more hardcore he's not as uh, as he described it wishy-washy as i am he's he's fully on board with it He's 100%. Yep, it happened. It's done. We're going to go find Jesus. Okay, so I think that's going to be a great conversation. And I look forward to, <laughs> look forward yep. to hearing his opinion on all of that. But uh, yeah, Vinny, I'll definitely be in touch. You've got me now on um, my email, haven't you? And you can also message yeah. me instantly on uh, Telegram. If you're not on Telegram, get on there. I've got a group on there. And you're welcome to join us and get in on the conversation. Get a bit of a... Um, meet the meet the gang. There's a lot of us in on all this research, so you can come join the Telegram group to get in touch with me directly as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, Vinny, we'll we'll definitely do this again sometime. For everyone listening today, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation, and I'll be back next week um, on Sunday for another Truth of Therapy session. This one's late because I was away for the weekend, but I'll be doing another Truth of Therapy session, and um, I've also got another another few little uh, things up my sleeve which will be coming out in the next few weeks as well to look forward to but thanks for listening and as always god bless <laughs>